In a marine research university, we see a group of students celebrating a fellow colleague's birthday, but a PhD student named Shabon wants no part of it and is busy with her studies in the next room. Just then, Shabon's professor approaches her and asks her to join others in the celebration, but she simply declines the offer. However, the professor insists that she go on this tour to examine deep marine organisms with some strangers, hoping to help her gain some real-world experience and make friends. Initially, Shabon tries to resist the tour offer, but the professor threatens to fail her should she not go on the tour. Next, Shabon gets ready and reluctantly joins the other crew members aboard the fishing trawler named Niam Sin Oir. Her school friend Johnny picks her up and introduces her to his aunt, Sierra. She is then introduced to the ship owner, Gerard, and his wife, Freya, and apart from them, the crew is also accompanied by the ship's engineers, Omid Hamilton and Sudi Hamilton. However, it is revealed that Gerald hasn't had a big haul in a long time, making it difficult for him to keep the trawler afloat. While the crew is going to the middle of the ocean to fish, Shabon dives in hoping to find an anomaly for her research. After a brief chat, Shabon moves to the trawler's deck and takes off her cap and sweater. That's when the crew realizes that she's a redhead. Apparently, the crew members believe that having a redhead on the ship is considered bad luck. Gerard insists on kicking her out even. But Freya reminds him that they cannot afford to return her ticket money. Seeing the crew worried, Johnny calmly advises Shabon to put the cap back on, and just when the trawler starts moving into the ocean, Johnny takes Shabon for a tour of it. At that point, Shabon discovers that the trawler only has four bunks and the crew works in two shifts. Three people are scheduled to work at once while the other three sleep. Each member receives two hours of sleep each day and works in shifts the rest of the day. Hearing this, Shabon worries that sleep loss could result in psychosis, but Johnny brushes her concerns aside. Next, we see that luck is once again not on Gerard and Freya's side. The Coast Guard declares the region they were supposed to fish as the Exclusion Zone. Exclusion Zones are areas into which entry is forbidden, especially by ships or aircraft. But Gerard ignores the Coast Guard's message and takes the ship into the zone anyway, desperate for a large haul of fish to pay his debt. On the way, Siobhan struggles to get along with others like always. She spends most of her time reading books by herself. Afterward, when they enter the exclusion zone, the trawler's raider catches a movement in the water. Gerard speculates it to be a bunch of fish and becomes hopeful. However, his hopes are shattered when he realizes that the fish are moving unusually fast and directly toward them. Predictably, the ship collides with the unknown object and becomes immovable. The collusion damages the boat's radio, leaving them contactless from the rest of the world. At the same time, Omid discovers multiple strange breaches in the hull, leaking a bluish-green slime. The slime seems to change the texture of the wood and somehow pierce through it like paper. Shabon takes a look at it and assumes that it could be a species of barnacles. Hearing this, Gerard asks Shabon to jump into the water and cut the boat free from it. Initially, Shabon is hesitant to go underwater, especially when the unknown creature could be anything. But Gerard convinces Shabon, reminding her that she is here to look for anomalies anyway. Next, Shabon anxiously puts on her diving gear, and before she dives in, Gerard hands her a gutting knife. When she reaches underwater, Shabon learns that the things stuck on the boat are the glowing tentacles of some organism. She then calmly proceeds to cut the tentacles off, but she is soon interrupted by an enormous bioluminescent organism behind her. Shabon freaks out at this and immediately rushes to the surface before the organism latches its tentacles on her. She shares the discovery with Gerard and others, fearing for her life. But Gerard becomes excited and expects the organism to be a giant squid. And despite Shabon's warnings, he orders everyone to remain alert for the potential catch. Now, the crew cast their net in an attempt to capture the creature. But to their surprise, their mysterious being is too heavy for them and almost overturns the boat. Since they have no other options now, the crew is forced to let go of the net. However, while releasing the net, Johnny's sleeve gets caught in the machinery and he agitatedly starts screaming. Seeing this, the crew quickly comes to his rescue. But by the time they free him, Johnny's hand is already sliced by the rope. Immediately, Omid helps him apply first aid and covers the wound. Whereas Siobhan manages the site where Johnny was hurt and notices the slime along with his blood. 
Just when Shaban is expecting Johnny's blood and the green slime, she notices another ship nearby. When Gerard is notified about this, he sends out a flare signal to the ship, but it doesn't evoke any response from them. Seeing this, he decides to row to the ship and ask for their help. While everyone refuses to accompany Gerard on the rowboat, Siobhan and Johnny volunteer to join him. The trio then ventures out to seek help, only to find the ship's deck unmanned and the radio totally smashed. They then thoroughly inspect the ship's cabin, and to their horror, the trio discovers the dead bodies of the ship's crew, with one man brutally mutilated. Gerard explains how sea fever could do that to anyone out there, but Siobhan is skeptical about the incident and believes it's more than just a sea fever. Either way, Gerard orders Siobhan and Johnny to keep this discovery a secret. After returning to the boat, they lie to the rest of the crew about what they discovered on the ship. Fortunately, Freya and Omid have better news to share. It seems that the mysterious creature underwater has let go of its grip to the ship and it's free to go. But seeing the size of that creature and the condition of the other ship, Siobhan refuses to believe that they are safe. However, Omid convinces her that this was their lucky break and miracles do happen. But just then, Freya reveals that another mysterious large object is heading toward their ship. And once again, Gerard is not bothered by it, but instead he insists on catching the creature. At first, Freya doesn't approve of his idea. But Gerard reminds her about their financial status, so on Freya's orders, the crew launches their net in the water. Fortunately, it is nothing more than a massive haul of fish, which lifts the crew's spirit. Later that night, Johnny starts feeling uneasy and claims that he wants to go for a swim. But hearing such a weird request in this situation, the crew asks him if he's alright. Siobhan claims that Johnny's hand might be infected by the slime, which is why he feels weird right now. She then checks his eyes and immediately notices something moving inside. Moments later, Johnny goes to freshen up, but for some reason, he feels immense pain in his eyes. And all of a sudden, he loses his sight and bursts his eyeballs. As a result, tiny organisms are blown out, which slither down the drain and enter the ship's water system. With this, Johnny screams in pain and eventually passes away, right before everyone's eyes. The crew goes into a state of shock, but Siobhan figures out what just happened to Johnny. So while Sierra mourns Johnny's death, Siobhan gathers Gerard, Omid, and Freya to inform them about the parasites inside Johnny's eyes. She believes that those parasites were responsible for Johnny's death and they probably got into the boat's water system. Omid panics and rushes to warn Sudi, who is taking a shower. He urges Sudi to get out of the shower immediately, but Sudi takes it as a joke and dismisses his brother. While the parasites get into his body, Siobhan and Omid eventually break into the shower to rescue Sudi, but they find him laying down with cuts all over his body. Later, the crew inspects the water filtration system and learns that the creatures have contaminated it. And on top of that, the parasites have eaten through all their filters. Siobhan speculates that the small parasites are the larvae of that enormous sea creature, and she also believes that the saltwater larvae will probably die in fresh water in a few hours. Nevertheless, this infiltration of parasites causes panic among the crew members as they no longer have safe drinking water. After a while, Omid and Siobhan inspect the boat's water tank to check if the larvae are dead. They carefully open the lid but notice that the larvae are still alive. At the same time as Gerard steers the trawler toward the shore, Siobhan decides to inspect the slime. Soon she discovers that the slimes are filled with live eggs and gathers other crew members to share this news with them. Siobhan explains that the slime got into Johnny's blood through his open wound, producing a regenerative substance. He believes that the crew is as vulnerable as Johnny was and will be infected unless they kill those eggs. So Siobhan and Omid start performing a range of experiments on the slime sample. They also try to kill the larvae with UV light, but it does not work. Then Siobhan gets another idea and is hopeful that maybe electrocuting the creature might kill it. However, Frey is opposed to the idea as it may irreparably damage the boat. But Siobhan reminds her that she must choose between her boat and the crew, and after a heated argument with Siobhan, Freya eventually agrees and the crew makes preparations to electrify the trawler. They insulate the boat's vital areas, wear rubber boots for protection, and pour salt water all over the boat to carry the current. 
Moments later, the crew electrocutes the trawler, and the plan works out perfectly, but Sudi's condition gets increasingly worse. After inspecting Sudi's condition, Freya gets impatient about reaching the shore safely, but Siobhan tells her that they must self-quarantine on the ship. Siobhan believes that the quarantine must last for at least 36 hours after they killed the eggs. As Johnny was infected after 36 hours, Siobhan argues that if any of them are infected, they could risk infecting other people. However, Freya disagrees and wants to admit Sudi to a hospital as soon as possible. Even Omid feels that Sudi needs to be hospitalized despite the risk of him infecting others, but after a while, all of these discussions turn out to be meaningless, as Sudi, too, gives in to the infection. Now, Siobhan decides to take matters into her own hands and disables the boat's engine by entangling the propeller with a rope. However, it doesn't take Omid long to figure out that Siobhan is behind it. He drags her back into the cabin and tells everyone about her deed. This naturally enrages the crew members, and Ciara punches the girl. But Siobhan stands by what she did and clarifies to them that she's not doing this for selfish reasons. She makes them realize that they can't afford to risk the life of their loved ones back home. Hearing the truth behind Siobhan's words, the crew finally decides to follow the strict quarantine measures. At first, Siobhan starts by checking everyone's eyes for possible infections. Siobhan, Omid, Freya, and Ciara pass the test, but unfortunately, Freya notices parasites in Gerard's eyes. Faced with his impending doom, Gerard comes clean about driving the trawler to the exclusion zone. This enrages Ciara, and she blames Gerard for Johnny's death. At this point, Ciara realizes how wrong she was about Siobhan and apologizes to her. However, she starts choking Siobhan mid-apology and gets into a fight with her. Afraid that Ciara might be infected, Siobhan climbs up the ladder to inform others, but Ciara panics and immediately grabs Siobhan's leg, pleading with her to stop. However, the pleading soon turns into possessed yelling, and the frightening Siobhan kicks her off the ladder. Unfortunately, Ciara hits her head on the floor and dies on the spot. Meanwhile, after hearing the loud thud, Omid arrives from the hull and learns about Sierra's death. Just then, Siobhan and Omid notice the parasite popping out of her eyes and immediately kill it. She then rushes to inform Freya about this, only to realize that Freya gave Gerard an easy death before the parasite could torture him. In a state of panic, Freya insists on leaving for the shore on a rowboat, but knowing how important this trawler is in Freya's life, Omid and Siobhan try to convince her against abandoning the boat. However, Freya tells them she no longer cares for Niam Sin Oir and just leaves on her rowboat. Later, as Omid and Siobhan put Sierra's body in the freezer, they hear noises coming from the water tank room. They quickly go to the room to see if something is wrong and notice a sound coming from inside the tank. From the sound of it, Siobhan guesses that there is still one larva remaining. She speculates that the larvae ate each other to survive like tadpoles until only one creature was left remaining. Siobhan figured out that the larvae can be weakened only in a humid environment as it is a cold water creature. So they heat the tank in order to weaken the creature, and after a while, they finally open the lid. But to their surprise, they discover that the lone surviving larva has grown larger and chewed through the hole to return to the water. And with a giant hole in the hole, the boat begins to sink. Immediately, the duo gather the remaining food and other essentials and return to the deck. And since Siobhan and Omid are forced to leave the rowboat anyway, they set the boat on fire and make a beacon out of it. Next, Siobhan boards an inflatable raft and asks Omid to join her. However, Omid falls into the water and starts drowning, while the tentacles surround him from all sides. Seeing this, Siobhan courageously dives into the water and saves him from the creature. And just when the two board the raft, they notice help arriving in the distance. After a long time, they feel relieved and happy to be free of this horror. But just then they notice that Siobhan has sustained a cut on her wrist. She realizes she is infected and cannot risk the life of other people by going to the shore. So Siobhan decides to dive back into the water and start swimming toward the bioluminescent creature. Meanwhile, Omid mourns the loss of his friend Siobhan. 
who just saved his life as help approaches. Make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.